up guys and welcome back to dark matter so i was really kind of dreading doing this review just because i feel like some of the critiques in my unboxing video of the razor plus upset a few android fans and that can be clearly seen kind of from my dislike ratio on that video but i did actually have quite a bit of traction on that video and i did have quite a few comments actually asking me if i would do a review of the razor plus so i didn't want to disappoint anyone I wanted to give you my thoughts on the Razer Plus after using it for a while. And actually this is my first time kind of returning to the Android ecosystem after, you know, several years of being on iPhone. So it's definitely been a learning experience for me. There's a few of the quirks that I feel like may just be Android quirks, but regardless, I wanted to test it out and give my thoughts on some of the good things and some of the flaws as well, and just give kind of a short, compact review of my experiences using the Motorola Razor Plus. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. And I wanted to start with what's really kind of my favorite part of smartphones, and that's the design. And I gotta say, that is one thing that Motorola really knocked out of the park with the Razer Plus. As I mentioned in my unboxing, I really like the two-tone design they went with on the Razer Plus. The glossy on the front and kind of the matte black on the back. I think it's super clean and super minimal. Now obviously the second screen is one of the standout features on the Razer Plus and even I gotta admit it just looks super futuristic on the outside of the phone. Especially the way they have it cut out around the cameras. It just looks super clean. Obviously the foldable part of it is a really cool design feature of the phone. I've even kind of wanted to try using a folding phone for a while just because of how they can be compact when you need them them to be but you can open them up and get that full smartphone experience anytime you prefer that and we'll just kind of transition to the usability of the phone from there i gotta admit i was kind of wrong about the usefulness of that outside screen and i have partly you guys to thank for that in the comments on my last video you really kind of opened my eyes to some of the use cases for this phone. But even in my own usage of it, I've kind of found that it is kind of useful for some things. Now, that doesn't mean that it's fully without its flaws. For instance, you guys were completely right about how helpful the ability to text or reply to messages on the secondary screen is. It's been really convenient for me in my usage, just being able to type out a text without having to open up the full screen of the phone, you know, just real quick. Now, these are things that I, as an iPhone user, would use my Apple Watch for, but even I gotta admit, it is easier, obviously, on the bigger screen that this offers on the outside than trying to type out a message on the Apple Watch. So yeah, I could definitely see how if you're just pulling this out of your pocket to respond to a text really quick you don't maybe want to open up the full phone you just want to look at it glance at it real quick reply and then put it back in your pocket what i am still going to critique it on though is just motorola's overall software implementation on this second screen for example if you double tap the screen or press a lock button it just brings up a full-size clock with the date pretty small under there and then one notification icon and the battery icon. Now on any phone that I've had, whether it was the Android phones I used to use or the iPhone now that they finally got it on iPhone, I've always enjoyed the always on display for a few reasons. One, because I do like having a quick way to see the time, but if you have a watch, I mean, whether it's a smartwatch or not, kind of does away with the need for that feature. But two, because I like to take a quick glance at the notifications and even to have a preview of the content in those notifications. Now, iPhone's not perfect with this either, so no, I'm not a complete Apple sheep like some of you think. But I just feel like they could have done a bit better job at showing you more information on that big screen from a quick glance. Otherwise, you have to unlock it, and then there's another tap you have to do to open the notifications. I just wish if you double tapped or clicked the power button, it showed you the time as well as a, a glance at what notifications you have. Now, one thing I have enjoyed about the Motorola as opposed to like a Samsung is how clean the software is overall. Now that does come with a caveat. It still does come pre-installed with quite a few games and useless apps that you don't need. I don't like when any phone does that. I just think that if you're spending that much money on a phone, you shouldn't have to worry about like Motorola trying to peddle you extra apps from other companies that you don't need. You, the end consumer, shouldn't have to deal with getting rid of those extra apps. I mean, at least 
they are actually able to be uninstalled now. At first I didn't think they were because you can't do it from the app library. You have to actually go into the settings, but you are able to uninstall those apps. I just think bloatware, like it should be a thing of the past already. Overall, the software is super clean. I think most of the problems I had with like figuring out the settings and finding out where things were was mostly just from me going back to Android from iPhone. I had the same type of issues when I switched from Android to iPhone in the beginning. So that's not necessarily something that I'm going to really criticize Motorola for or any other Android phone for. Look, I'm only gonna briefly talk about the camera because I'm not a camera expert and I'm willing to bet that most people that buy smartphones aren't camera experts. The cameras on the outside are really good from what I could tell. I personally am used to the kind of image that iPhone creates. My all time favorite camera though is on the Google Pixel phones. I just think that they've really mastered HDR and they just kind of get almost a perfect picture almost every single time. But this phone, it has a good camera. It has an acceptable camera. I don't think that you'll have any problems with it especially since you can take selfies now with the outside cameras and actually see yourself on the outside screen as well. The displays themselves I found to be super high quality as well. The outside screen, as I said before, looks futuristic, but it, it's also really vibrant. It looks really nice. The inside screen looks really great as well. It is a little saturated for my taste, but I still found it to be really enjoyable. And it is true what they say about like the flip phones, the folding phones you can't really tell the crease after a while of just using content. Now I did want to put a little asterisk on that. In certain lighting conditions, you can definitely tell it's there. You're going to have an obvious glare on the center part. And I found that to be distracting mostly when I was watching YouTube videos and had it turned to the side. But other than those specific lighting conditions, I very rarely notice the crease in my use case. The battery is another thing I hear, you know, folding and flip phones get knocked on quite a bit. This one has been acceptable it lasts a decent time i do think that it takes quite a bit of time to charge at least compared to my iphone i haven't used too many other phones to compare it to but i don't know i guess i expected it to be a little bit faster charging most android phones have some of the fastest charging so now the one last thing i feel like would be bad for me to leave out since it just came out is a comparison of this to the Samsung Galaxy Flip 5. I've only had brief hands-on experience with the Galaxy Flip 5. As most of you have probably seen, they decided to go with the bigger outside screen just like this one. I don't think it looks as futuristic because it doesn't go around the cameras. And I know it's just a tiny detail, but I think it gives the Razer Plus just that slight edge. I also think that the Razer Plus looks better overall than the Galaxy. And on top of that, you don't have to deal with Samsung's UI. I've never been a big fan of Samsung's UI. I feel like it's super colorful and kind of looks childish in a way. I don't know. There's just something off about it that I don't like. But I would say the the one area that Samsung just has Motorola B in is the overall build quality of their phone. The Flip 5 just feels so much more sturdy in the hand. The Razer Plus is just kind of light and kind of feels a little bit cheaper than the Flip 5. The buttons are less clicky on the Razer Plus. The crease has also been dramatically reduced on the Flip 5. And even though it's not that noticeable on the Razer Plus, it's even less noticeable on the Flip 5. It almost just disappears. And I think that's just mostly due to Samsung's experience in manufacturing. But just as far as overall build quality, the Flip 5 to me is better than the Razer Plus. Still can't beat the Razer Plus's design for me. I think the looks are super clean and super minimal, like I've said before. Looks wise, the Razer Plus is definitely the winner for me. But that's really everything I wanted to talk about with the Razer Plus. I've been using it as my work phone, so I was able to get, you know, some insight into how it worked as far as that goes. I work for a phone company. I've had tons of people interested in this because I, I know that a lot of carriers are doing crazy deals on this. I definitely think it's worth it if you can get it on a deal. It's a great flip phone and it holds its own. There's just a few little quirks that you know maybe not make it the best phone in this class but it's definitely a top runner out there and if you like android and 
you've been wanting a flip phone, I think this is the one to go for. Thank you as always for tuning into Dark Matter. I appreciate everyone bearing with me while I was on vacation. Please give me a like if you like this video. Go ahead and comment, leave me some feedback. Android fans, I'm talking to you. Leave me some feedback. Did I redeem myself? Or am I still just an apple sheep to you? I'm sorry if that's the case. I, I don't feel like I am. I love Android phones. I would switch back to Android if I could get iMessage on it. I really would. But anyways, please feel free to subscribe to follow along for more content. And we'll see you guys in the next one.